No, they brought stuff here for you to look at and explore. They did it last year. Oh. I definitely didn't miss that day. You definitely did. Probably. Like at this point, I gotta be honest, Mason. I have no idea how in the world you're gonna go to the prom. I, I, I'm going to pull out the biggest excuse out of my behind, Mr. Hall. You just don't I did not care. All right. Jump on you. Ladies and gentlemen, so we're going to try this. I think Hannah's going to cooperate where I can. Oh, no, I'm going to be dancing. I'm going to be dancing. I'm going to be, be partying. Oh, 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 oh. He didn't bring Oh, yeah. It was an accident. He brought the first year. I thought the Hey, man. The big bush, right? Hey, hey. Oh. Hey. Yeah, but you just don't. Focus. Sorry. Thank you. Now, I introduced to you the different types of bonds we're going to talk about. I'm going to start with the one that's probably the most simple. Let's take one here. Hey. Hey, Thursday. 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 Yeah. I can take pictures of seven if you want. So, what we have, the first of the bonds that we will look at. Okay. The first one is ionic bond. Now, before I get too far into this, I have to give you a warning. That's the type of guy I am. You need to pay attention. This is why. This is the last easy thing I'm going to teach you. From here, it becomes very, very complex. There is many different rules and reasons as to why we do certain things, and you have to know them. The next thing I teach you after bonds is nomenclature. Nomenclature is going to slam you in the face with a two by four. I'm just telling you. Tanner. Oh, we. Oh, never mind. I wasn't, uh, never mind. I wasn't here yesterday. I forgot. He wasn't here. I wasn't here either. Oh, so we didn't take any notes yesterday? I was at East yesterday. We just went to Mr. Short's room and we watched the Okay. Bridge. So whenever we last took notes, we were going over the the bond forms and the differences in uh, electronic uh, uh, branches of electronic activity. Yeah, and we didn't finish. Zero to zero point two is non-polar to the We finished the electronic activity then. Point two to around one point seven. You left. Oh, we both were going away. Oh. One point seven? One point seven. Okay. I want to teach you a different way to know it. And then one point seven to, I thought it says three point three. Is ionic. What are you dancing for? Yes, 0.2 and 1.7. Polar covalent. Then a 1.7 to 3.3 is ionic. You know I'm going to need this one, right? Okay, you lay it down. You lay down. You lay down. Yeah. You look at ionic bonds. When you're going to do nomenclature, nomenclature is based off of the bonds that are within the molecules and the compounds. So when we do this, what are you going to be looking at and seeing? What type of bonds are there? That's how you're going to determine what to what set of rules to use. This is my warning to you. Before we do anything, before we get anywhere, for the love of humanity, get these bonds down. Uh oh, best friend. What's wrong? That was weird. Roid Rager. All right, so ionic bonds are bonds that form. <laughs> from ions. No way. Mm -hmm. Now, if you don't remember what ions are, 
That's okay. There's two different types of ions that we deal with. first ion we deal with is something called a cation. All cations are, are positively, well let's just say positive, sure, with positively charged ions. It's positively charged ions. All the cations are when you look at cations, the key to this for them to form is an atom must lose electrons. Certain atoms we have, certain atoms we deal with, certain atoms that we face, they will lose electrons. And whenever they lose these electrons, they form cations. Second one. Second one we deal with are anions. These are negatively charged ions. And these are ones that to form. key to this is, is when you break it down and you look at it, is the electron. Electrons are negatively charged, so you have to look at it as you're gaining or losing negative charges. So gaining or losing negative charges. Whenever you gain, pick up negative charges, it becomes negative. If we lose negative charges, it becomes positive. Alright? Brings us to the big idea. between the atoms. I thought you were talking about the uh, the lesson plan, like ionic bonds were 0.2 to 1.3, and I was like, wow, that's a really weird, weird, uh, that's a really weird lesson for it to go through. No. <laughs> I, thought you, I thought you were telling us to read the book. I was like, I, Mr. Hall said I used to read the book? We have a book. Oh, wait, do we, we have, have a book? book? I forgot what the chemistry book looked like until yesterday. Yeah. I haven't seen the chemistry book. Where is well, it? Yes. Okay, we thought you were saying. Huh? Okay, me too. Yes. I think I like hearing anything about this. This is crazy, but I have a book from every single one of my classes I've taken, just in case I need to look back at it. 
Yeah. Don't tell my teachers I said that though, because half of them stolen. Yeah, well, you shouldn't have told him that. <laughs> don't worry. Don't worry. I trust Mr. Hall in my life. Don't worry. The book that was stolen is not being used. I don't trust you with my life. Okay, buddy. I didn't. I don't trust you either. I wouldn't trust you with my death. All right. Why lose game electrons? What? Oh, so what Tanner said? Yeah. You're weird, Tanner. I'm not weird. Stop! What did I do to you? Do, you? do you mean this more like why? I can't like, even hear it. It's a good like, congratulations. Why are we losing games? Oh, 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 oh yeah. Oh, and then I get oh, now we're going to walk around? Like, do you mean it's why do we have to lose electrons <laughs> to get ions? Or just why do we lose them? <laughs> Why are we losing or gaining electrons? Why are we forming the ions? That's the whole reason. Well, I think there's some air coming out of the reason as to why <laughs> is the idea of a full octet. <laughs> so you look at a full octet. What I'm talking about is the octet rule. If you've never heard of it before, it's okay. For those of you that were in my class last year, you bet your bottom dollar you heard about it. Hey, but no, 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 We're not doing that today. No. Yummy marker. She's learned to take her clothes off. So the octet rule. brother will not keep any bit of clothing on. Now, there are exceptions to the octet rule. We'll cover those. But for the most part, Every element of the periodic table is going to follow the octet rule. So the octet rule states all elements want to be like the noble gases. Eight valence electrons. They want to be like those. No, I hold nine. So when you're breaking this down, you're looking at the eight valence electrons that we're talking about. Valence electrons, little side note. Valence electrons are the outer shell. You. <clears throat> so valence electrons are the outer shell electrons that we see that we look at. So these outer shell electrons, those are the ones that are on the outermost energy level. Now I'm going to go ahead and give you the four exceptions. There's more than four exceptions, practically, but we'll just we'll just stick with the base of the four to keep life uh, simple for you. Great. So, uh, this next test is about to be crazy. Thank you. Feel it. It's be lit. I'll light it up a little. I hear it. Shake it. Hey, she's doing. She's hitting the hardest catches. Right now, she's turning and she's like clapping her hands and she's like rubbing her hand. I mean, pulled her sweatshirt back down, but she had grabbed it and she pulled the sleeve up, which is the start of her working her arm out, to which she'll work her arm out and then she'll work her arm down, pull the sweatshirt up, and work the other one off. So, first rule record we have, 
feel like an obstacle for me today. First one is hydrogen. Hydrogen is the first rule breaker. This is wild. What? You've got a monster behind your head. <laughs> yeah. It's a velociraptor. Shh. I stole it from Jurassic Park. Hydrogen forms only one bond. <coughs> There's a reason for this. What's that happen to be called? What's the first double gas? What are you hiding behind that test pistol? The velociraptor, I told you. Oh Lord. I'm working on building my trust back with it. I got I've gotten three smiles and a few laughs out of your face. Yeah. Oh First noble gas is helium. Well, How many electrons can go in the first energy level? Two. Only two. How many electrons <laughs> does hydrogen start with? One. So if I add a bond to it, it brings another one in, you get to flow like that. It's two. Get those legs today. Now you want up here. That was really, she thought that was really disrespectful. It was my daughter the whole time. Oh my god. Whoa. Liar. Oh, she's already she's sleepy. Even scary. This is all her first words better be chemistry. Her first word was dad. What about How do you feel? How do you feel? Feel great. How do you feel that dad is easier to say than mom? Which is why I'm a baby hey, hey. saying dad. How about you? How about you? Uh, doesn't change the win at all. <laughs> win still win. So number two uh, is uh, boron. What are you saying? Boron. Why aren't you saying me? It's my favorite element. Boron's atomic number five. Forms only. I feel like every time you say your favorite element is, I have a small identity crisis because I don't know. What well, pick boron. I think I think it might be neon. I think mine. It's gotta be like thallium. No, thorium. Thorium or thallium. Mister, I'll say the word and I can get you two tons of magnesium in here for only like two thousand dollars. <laughs> say the word and I got you some uranium, Mister Hall. So much magnesium. So boron forms only three bonds. Okay. Reason it forms only three bonds and only has three electrons to share. A contact in China. He sells them by the container. Includes Number three. I might misspell this. If I do, yell at him. That's okay. I'm pulling out my periodic table as we speak. Boss. Hang on, Hannah. I'm gonna make sure we spell this right now. <coughs> in Spanish, we spell it exactly the way it sounds. Phosphorus. Phosphorus. I can't spell it. Phosphorus. Forms. Phosphorus is such a good one too, isn't it? I don't like it when it's white. Five. Bonds. I can't spell phosphorus either. Now there's a key to this one. If and only if. It's in purple. Oh my god. Uh oh. Bonded to high electronegative elements. So ones like these, like these high electronegative elements that we're talking about, is like fluorine, chlorine. Oxygen. They're bonded with those, then that phosphorus will break the octet rule and form a fifth bond. Is that five bonds? If and only if yes. bonded to high electronegative elements. Fourth. Sorry for the interruption, but at the bell, when Mrs. Cook's second period class kindly report to her classroom, no. Mrs. Cook's second period class report to her classroom. Thank you. <laughs>
the gym. <laughs> well, well, I'm in the gym school for a career, right? Oh, yeah. yes. Sulfur. Sulfur will form six bonds. Mm. Well, Alright, right? Guess what? If and only if bonded to high electronegative elements. I'm going to put some ditto marks here so you can rewrite that. I'm holding a toddler, so yeah, write that yourself. So it'll, it will only form six bonds if and only if it's bonded to high electronegative elements? Correct. So if it's not bonded mm -hmm. to high electronegative elements, it will not. Okay. Listen, Mar, the plan is to move forward. We will still have our special guest with us. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so to back to where we were talking. We've been talking. We just got started on ionic bonds. So I introduced you with the ion bonds yesterday. Not only did I introduce you with the ion bonds, I introduced you to the different types of ions. So there's a cation. What charge does cation have? Um, um, positive. Positive. Way to remind yourself about this is think about Hannah and how she loves cats. She loves every animal, but anytime she watches Chosen Kids, there's this little segment that comes on and they got little kittens running out of a bag. And she's like, oh, oh, what's that? What's that? What's that? I'm like, it's a kid cat. It's from the devil. We don't need cat. We got dog, right? He is sitting on the floor eating her cookie. Yeah. So, uh, cations are positive, anions are negative. negative. So, cations, do they gain or lose electrons? Mm -hmm. They lose. You got to look at it this way they're losing negative charges. The anions gain or lose? Gain. They're gaining negative charges. All of this revolves around what they desire. All of them want what? A full octet. A full octet, which is? Eight valence eight, eight electrons. electrons. Who already has eight valence electrons? No gas. No gas. Where's the no gas on the periodic table? All the way to the right. All the way to the right. The 18th column. Those are the noble gases. Are all of the 18th column noble gases or just the ones in red? All of them. Okay. So. <coughs> so, here's what we're going to look at now. Okay? I want to show you something. You're already used to this. The question comes down to will it form? Cation or anion? It's a good question, I know. Come here, I'll let you look. So, will it form a cation or will it form an anion? Another way of looking at this when we're asking will it form a cation or will it form an anion? Will it either lose? Or gain electrons. It's the same thing we're asking here. You guys are already built and ready for this. The periodic table is built the way it is off of very different ideas and concepts. So whenever you break it down, you look at it. Look at something from the first column. So let's say sodium. If I did the electron configuration for sodium, I want you to write it down. Do the electron configuration for sodium.
So hopefully you got what I have on the board. You want to check them out? No, you will stay with me. She hates you. Scared Nothing will be better than Ashton Huff. Ashton Huff came in yesterday for eight period study hall. So he walks in and she's with me. And he walks in and aggressively looked at her and said, What do you want? As soon as he did it, she was like, <laughs> Pull it in to me. So, <coughs> here is electron configuration for sodium. Along with it, do the electron configuration of potassium. Kissman's declaration. Oh, did she just say, what's that? Yeah. That would be so cute. It's her favorite thing. Every kid goes through like a question phase, and it's a different question. And I think my least favorite has to be the why phase. Oh, my little brother is in that phase, and then I tell him why, and then he says no <laughs> every time. What do you want from me? You don't know. Oh, my sister will be talking to me, and then I'll say something, and she'll go, But why? <laughs> like, if I'll tell her not to do something, she'll just she'll say, But why? And I'll tell her why, and then she'll be like, But why? <laughs> like, she did that for like 30 minutes. And I started doing it back, and so she got mad at me. <laughs> so she'll say something, I'll be like, But why? And she'll be like, All right. Look at sodium. I want you to draw some relationships here. Look at sodium. What is the highest energy level for sodium? Three. It's what? Three. It's three. Third energy level. How do you know that? Because it's a, there's a three. It's the, the last one, and it is the biggest one, two, number. Three. Oh, okay, three. Oh, okay, three. How many valence electrons does sodium have? Uh, that's a good question. Three. That one. No, wait, How many valence electrons does sodium have? Ooh, uh, a few. Valence electrons, the outer energy shell, right? Yeah. So that's three. How many electrons are in the third energy level? One. That's one. Oh. Poor fella. We'll take a look at potassium. What's the highest energy level of potassium? Four. Four. How many valence electrons does potassium have? One. Oh, really? Mm, that's interesting. Hey, somebody do me a favor. What group, uh, what column are these two out of? Uh, the first the first column? I don't want your cookie. You eat the cookie. So they're in the first column. They have one valence electron. one valence electron. Now, question to you, because the real question is will it form a cation or an anion? I'm trying to get to eight. What are you looking for? I'm trying to get to eight, right? So I'm at one, so I can either add seven, or here's the magic. What's in the second energy level? <coughs> How many electrons does no, sodium have in the second there's, energy? There's eight. The Where's system. the eight at? There's two in the S subshell and six in the P subshell. Okay, wave at them. Say hi. Good morning. Big dog. <laughs> now you don't know what to do. You're like, oh my gosh, they acknowledge me. They know I'm here. They're not T Rex. It's very nice. So. You think sodium's going to give up one or gain seven? It's going to be easier to give up the one. It's going to be easier to give up the one. Now here's the fun thing that happens. So it gives up this electron. It's no longer in the third energy level, now in the second energy level. It's lost an electron. How many protons does, uh, does sodium have? That's 11. So that's 11 positive charges. How many electrons does sodium have now? It has 10 because it, it lost one and gave it up. That's a plus one charge. Hence, sodium 
Will you stop erasing that? We'll form, we'll lose an electron, and it will form cations. Hey, look at potassium. Potassium has one valence electron. What do you think potassium will do? Eat that baby out of here. Don't need that garbage. Get out. Potassium, it's the same thing. We'll form a cation. Guess what the first column does? Exactly. Hey, how many valence electrons do they have? It's supposed to have eight. It's supposed to have eight. Whenever it comes off the periodic table at first, how many valence electrons does it have? One. One. You want a trick? Sure. I'll give you a trick. You ready for this? Column one has one valence electron. They form a plus one charge. Column two is two valence electrons. They will form a two plus charge. Here comes the fun part. Columns three through twelve do freaky weird things. You would care. imagine. Column 13 has three valence electrons. Forms three plus charge. Then you get to the 14th column. They don't like forming ions. They're weird. What they like to do is they like to share, because sharing is caring. Yeah. They like forming covalent bonds. But then we switch. 15th column has how many valence electrons? That's five. Yeah, all of a sudden, now it's easier for me to gain electrons than to lose electrons. So what they'll do, 15th column, is three negatives. Because they're gaining electrons now. Nervous about that or something? You should be. <laughs> you play for a fun. Go take it. <laughs> the rest of the class will jump to your rescue. <laughs> no 16 column has how many valence electrons? Uh, negative four. 16 column has how many valence electrons? Negative three, four, uh, negative, I mean. Six. Six. Okay. Take the one off. I feel like a trick question. So, uh, um, Forms two negatives. Seventeenth column has how many valence electrons? Uh, seven. Seven. Oh, Easier to gain one or lose seven. Gain one, so it'll form a negative one charge. <laughs> this right here is the breakdown of what they'll form. <coughs> So columns 1, 2, and 13 will form cations. Columns 15, 16, and 17 will form anions. Why are they doing this? Good question. Because they have trends. Okay, yeah, they have trends. It's not necessarily why they're doing this. They want They want they want what? They want what? They want eight valence electrons, which is the octet. They want a full octet. Yeah, You're fine. Like, tell me what I want to hear. Good job, Tanner. Okay. What's that? What is that? Octane the popular rock. Wow. I'm starting to get a natural right. So what happens here is they're going to form. Can I? Oh, you're sleepy. That's the problem. Yeah. So what happens when you wake up before you? You ever get so <laughs> Talking to her or me? Her. 
say I've heard the same. Tell her, go to sleep on time. Go to sleep on time. So, here's what we have. Ionic bonds are going to form when these do this. Now, the bond's going to come from where these electrons are going to be going. Electrons have to go somewhere. They're just not magically going to go somewhere. they got to go somewhere. I can't just yeet one out and say, I don't care where you go. You just can't stay here. Bad science. I'll put you on this side. Can you lay your head down? Even though they like to share, <laughs> yeah, could so like one theoretically the share <laughs> with like a cation or an anion? Will they do that? Uh, it can, yeah. So here's the way to look at it. What's a very common ionic bond you guys are aware of? Salt. Salt, Salt which is NaCl. How does that Salt. come about forming though? So, orbital notation. Of sodium and orbital notation of chlorine. You know what you just gave me, though? What? You gave me nomenclature. Yeah. I teach you actually how the name comes about. Why don't you turn your head? Turn this way. It's like sodium. In like NaCl, it's like chemical name is sodium chloride. Nomenclature is taking oh, yeah. the, the letters and making actual words. Yeah. Right. That's the hardest thing in this class is naming things. No, no, no it's rules. harder than you no, think. No, no, no. I did not say that that was the hardest. I said it was the, well, the turning point. A lot of people think that it, like the last year I talked to was like, I can't do nomenclature. It's so hard. Because it is. It's, yeah. not, it's not that hard. Look, Greg, Jeff, <laughs> Tanner. You're not just gonna, you're not gonna just see sodium and chlorine and be like, that's sodium chlorine. If I don't know the name for it, then I'll give it a name. You know what I'm gonna call it? Salt. Yeah. Like there's rules. If there's like two elements, of two of the same elements bonded together, you're gonna put like a dye in front of it. So. You know what I'm gonna say? Look at the name hydrogen peroxide. Who gives what do you think peroxide means? Who I give us um, Tanner. Well, I don't give a No, um, what's the, I, I used to know back in seventh grade when we went over it. Hey, Dad, what's the chemical name for water? Um, yeah, oh, Mom. <laughs> All right. No. So up here. No, not you, them. You lay your head back down. Mm -hmm. All right, so up here, what I've gave you is the orbital notation for sodium and the orbital notation for chlorine. Both of them are in the third energy level. It's the highest level they got. How many valence electrons does sodium have? One. So find the one up here. Here's the one, right? I want to get rid of that. What does chlorine want? It wants to get one. Exactly. So what happens is you have sodium that's in real desperation of getting a, a date for the dance. The day of. And chlorine is in real desperation of a date for the dance now. Because chlorine decided that they're going to go late. So then what happens is sodium and chlorine come close to one another. Sodium gives up her snap. Now chlorine adds her snap to his snap collection. Wait, which one's who's who? And they're snapping. NA is the girl, CL is the boy. But here's the thing that takes place. What did sodium lose? Um, her Snapchat. <laughs> yeah, and an electron, right? I believe So sodium now is positive. Chlorine gained that electron. So it's now negative. 
What do opposites do? They attract. So now we have sodium. It's a beautiful opposite. Chloride. Boom. Wow. They're joined together. Enough to bring a grown man to tears. Mr. Hall, what is the, the chemical name you require? Dihydrogen monoxide. Gee. It's a funny one. H2O. You guys, you guys have covered three of the naming rules. You're just not aware of it. What is it? You've covered three of the naming rules. You sounding mad. Sodium chloride, that's ionic compound naming rules. That hydrogen monoxide is covalent uh, bonded naming molecule naming rules. And then uh, hydrogen peroxide, peroxide is a polyatomic ion. Which you will have to memorize 30 of those, by the way. Uh, what is peroxide? It's O2 2 negative. He's looking for it on the chart. Polyatomic oh, ions are made of elements, they're not uh, on the periodic table. So it's elements bonding to O2. So O4 negative? <laughs> uh, they are, polyatomic ions are a group of covalently bonded atoms that have ionic oh. characteristics. That's yeah, they're having an identity crisis. <laughs> now, here's the cool thing is what actually happens with this. If you guys ever looked at rock salt or maybe you got like salt for, if you got a well, you got a salt treatment for your well water before you use it. Here's the cool thing is if you look at salt like this, Especially the big rock socks, it looks like a cube, right? You ever saw that? Looks like cubes, very interesting. There's a reason behind that. It forms something special. Because they just don't join together like this. Here's how they do. Yeah, it's very interesting. There's actually a guy, there's a video I watched one year that actually had a guy that took popcorn, had it set over top of it. Uh, he released sodium into, uh, he set sodium out, and then he released chlorine gas that both of them would have killed somebody. Let them mix, turn the chlorine gas off once it was safe goes over gets popcorn and they start eating it and it's salty because he made salt is it like instant because you said chlorine's a gas and oh yeah is sodium like what does it look like uh, it's a very shiny metal so as soon as i touch it's just like bam it was all yes that's so funny like gas. Gas okay here's how they join together <laughs> yeah. So it joins together in a very specific way. A block of chain. Rose. Don't touch Rose like Five that. minutes away. <laughs> so it joins in a very special way. Take a look. So the sodium, for example. The sodium's right here in the center, and the sodium has the plus charge, right? Mm -hmm. It's surrounded by the chlorides that had negatives. This is why you get the cube shape that you get when you get it with rock salt. You get something called a crystalline lattice. formed by ionic compound where 
cations surround anions and anions surround cations. The structure gives a lot of strength to it. You okay? You want me to have it? Thanks. I, I don't I don't want it. I don't want the passy. Thank you. For some reason to write, she's just all not sharing. I don't want the passy. It's in the salt. Oh my god. Uh, this is that? sodium chloride. I hate myself in that. That was a really funny joke. What are you talking about? You can't steal my you can't steal my flame. You can't take my thunder. What do you mean? You can't right. say that's a really funny joke. Oh, I knew that. Yeah, but I was laughing when I said it. You go. Know. You were. You said that was a really funny joke. Yeah, I was laughing. But nobody can nobody can say that. Other than well, you. my thing is when no, I find something really funny, I'll just go. That was a really funny Kenzie, joke. I'll say I'll say like the best joke ever, and Kenzie will look at me dead in the eyes and go, "That was really funny." <laughs> okay. Now, different ones <laughs> form these. Okay. So you have, it's just not sodium chloride that can form these. I want to teach you a trick. <sighs> now, I'm going to teach you, you're fine, now to them, not to you. I'm going to teach, teach you the Mr. Hall trick. Remember how I gave you the values that you could test and tell whether something was ionic or covalent? Okay. I'm going to teach you the shortest cut of all short cuts. Okay. Here we go. Ionic bonds. form between metals and non-metals. So how are we going to identify metals and non-metals? It's already done for you. How convenient. Look at the periodic table. I'm going to go over here to the periodic table, okay? You come with me? Okay. Look at your periodic table. On the periodic table, when you look at it, there's something that you've probably seen. You've probably wondered what in God's green earth it is. But I've never said nothing to you about it. The red line. The red line has a very special name. The red line is called the staircase. Why? Because it looks like a stair. So the stairs. That called me scooping. You're giving her money? Absolutely. Go take that. Go get that. <laughs> she grabs mine all the time. So when you break it down and you look at it, the staircase is set for you to be able to tell, okay? Now, very important that you listen to me right now. Because kids mess up on this every year. They miss this. I don't understand why we're missing this. It's literally this simple. To the left of the staircase, to the right of the staircase. To the left of the staircase, it's very easy to remember. Why? Because column one is the alkali metals. Column two are the alkali earth metals. The D block, we literally call them the transition metals. Everything to the left has metal in the name of it. To the left of the staircase are metals. 
all we need to know? Yeah, do, do, we do we need to know the alkaline and or whatever you heard? Yeah, it'd be good to know the group classifications. To the right of the staircase are non-metals. It's a non-metal. It's a good point. Thank you for that, sharing that with me. Your question. In this case, hydrogen falls under this classification as a non-metal. So it's a rule breaker. Yes, the rest of them are metals or non-metals, except for right on the staircase, there are a handful of them that we call metalloids. I don't need you to memorize those. Just know that they're metalloids. Well, Mr. Hall, what's a metalloid? Metalloids have characteristics of metals and non-metals. They have them both. Yeah, what's law? I really like Go the thing of the, like the elements as these lazy people. They just do what's easiest, and like they're just rule breakers. I think it's really funny. They really do. So the F block falls under the metals, right? Yeah. So we just break up. Uh, yeah, F blocks uh, carry characteristics. <laughs> what was the first column of metals, and then the D block? First column is called the alkali metals. Alkali. alkali. Yeah, that's good enough, right? Oh, uh, would you take that? I know I'm not spelling that right. Alkali metals. The second column, alkali earth metals. They say say. What is that? And then the D block, so columns 3 through 12, that is what we call the transition metals. And they do a bunch of freaky weird things. Something that's going to help you out here is what you're going to see is we're dealing with, when we're talking bonds in this class, we're really just scratching the surface, so we're going to deal with what we call the main metals, so the main elements. So the main <laughs> elements are from the S and the P blocks. Don't drop her on me. <laughs> <laughs> she may flip backwards. Everybody's freaking out yesterday. She loves to look upside down. Ever since she got older and can like hold her own weight and everything good. <laughs> you like Zoe. Oh. <laughs> the coffee kicking in. This is just her. Like so, any questions here on ionic bonds for me? Helium, hydrogen always doing some weird stuff. They are. Uh, pretty much, that's everything with ionic bonds except for electron dot notation, which, if you can't get electron dot notation, you shouldn't be in this room. If I can't get what? Electron dot notation. I promise you it's super simple. Okay, so here's what will happen Monday when you come in. Monday what we will do is I'm going to take the periodic table. We're going to break it down again to make sure you understand how many valence electrons are in each column. Okay, then we're going to do electron dot diagrams. After electron dot diagrams we switch. We're going to go into Covalent bonds. We're going to talk of the differences between a polar and a non-polar. I will tell you this. Some of you still owe me the quiz we took before break. No. Yeah. Several of you do. Yeah. Besides that. That's me. Not only the same. I don't know. That's why I mainly I just like cooking at home. When you can get 15 tacos for a negative three bucks, there's a problem. Hey, not anymore. You ain't getting, listen, you don't get free tacos. I feel like you gotta pay 12 bucks now. That's still so cheap. McDonald's, the meal is $10.
All right, so electron dot diagrams is where we're going to go today. So it's important to understand what we're going to do. So we had a lovely, uh, hopefully you had a lovely weekend. Oh, that's tough. I have a lovely three-hour delay today. Now, you... <laughs> to be honest, I did too. And it was funny because my, uh, my beautiful wife, Mary, looked at me last night and was like, hey, you want to drink some sparkling grape juice? I said, sure. I popped the cat, start pouring it into a cup, and as I did, they called. And I went in. They're giving us a reason to celebrate. So what I want to make sure you get, and you have an understanding of today, is an association of... How many valence electrons each column has? Someone okay. ate this good enough to get snatched. So you can write this on a periodic table if you want. You're absolutely more than welcome to do that. But I want to make sure you get this because this is super important. So what I'm going to put up here, and I'm going to do it in red, this will be. Valence electrons. Mr. Hall, can I have a new periodic table? Sure. Me too, please. Oh, yeah, Mr. Hall, I have a question. Okay. Okay, I was being a nerd last night and watching some Invincible and uh, Adam Eve, which is, you know, they came out with a new like, show. Oh, yeah, you missed me, but I forgot to respond. I it's, thought I responded. No, I just the, the, it. the Invincible oh, episodes are cool, but they came out with like, an Adam Eve thing. Okay, anyway, I was watching that. And I, they were talking about how mercury, mercury was a, a liquid at room temperature or something. And they were talking about some valence electron. Why is it a? Why is it a? Why? why what does that have to do with valence electrons? Why it's a liquid at room temperature? Is that is that just something they said? That's a really big question. Too. <laughs> All right. So valence electrons. So here's what I'm gonna write. I'm gonna write over top of each column the number of valence electrons per each column. So what you're going to see is if it falls in that column, that's the number of valence electrons in half. So, the first column has one. Second column has two. The D block, which we call the transition metals. Forget about them. Alright? Get them out of here. We don't worry about them. We're only dealing with what we call the main element. Does that include these? Correct. Uh, are we. Is helium. Uh, which one switch is the hydrogen over with helium or helium with hydrogen? In this case, like, come on, my hand's bigger than that. Helium slides over here. Okay. With column two? With column two. Now, we only deal with the main elements, okay? The main elements are S and P block, okay? So, Forget the transition metals, we go to column 13. Just remove the first number, and it tells you. 13th column, 3. 14th column, 4. 15th column, 5. 16th column, 6. 17th column is 7. 18th column is 8. These are the number of valence electrons that they have. Mr. Hall, why in the world did you give us this information? You need it to do electron dot diagrams. I will openly tell you, this is the easy part. Associated with molecules, compounds, and electrons. So whenever you're going to do, well, first you need to know what electron dot diagrams are. Takes chemical symbol the the 11. what it'll do is it takes the chemical symbol <coughs> and places dots around it to show 
play on Selectron. Dots. It's going to go around it. It's going to show the valence electrons. Here is what it looks like. Okay? I'm going to use for you a variable. So, a variable for the chemical, equation, uh, chemical sample. And then I'm going to show you the placement of where the electrons will go. They go in a certain order. And this is it. There's no tricks. I know what you're thinking. Holy smokes. Uh, we know Mr. Hall. There's a trick somewhere. There's no trick here. I promise you. I told you last week, if you can't get this, you should not be in high school. That's what a trick trickster would say, Mr. Hall. True. So, variable. X. Uh, Miss Stable wanted to bring this to you. I don't know what it is. Nothing. Miss Stable? Can we get a live unboxing. I love what is in the bucket bag. Can't take the bucket without making that girl that was being said. I should look. Let's see. This is fine. Is that a picture? No. Um, that's a He's been shocked. That's a picture. No, we got it oh. live. He's been shocked. It's a new bag. definition of deck the halls. <laughs> All right, so the variable X, what's the X stand for? It's the variable. You put any chemical symbol in there you want. C for carbon, K for potassium, L I for lithium, D E for beryllium. Doesn't matter. Tomorrow, I'm going to give you the elements you need to know for your element quiz. <laughs> Easiest quiz I give you. So, now we got to worry about the placement of where the electrons go. The first electron will go here to the top left. There's the first one. The second one will go right next to it. Now comes the fun part. The third one. The third one goes here. It's like a clock. Now I know what you're thinking. It's like a clock. No, it's not. Because the fourth one goes here. Why have they done this? That's a great question, which I'm getting ready to ask you after I show you where number five goes. It's okay. Do you not see it yet? How about if I give you number six? The sixth electron goes here. Good gravy. Figured it out yet? I feel like I see it. What are we observing? Is this opposite spins? No. Yeah, okay, I'm retired, guys. Is it like... You don't see it yet, do you? No, I, make it I think I see, but I don't know how it's to explain okay. it. Oh, wait, you go one to two, three to six, four to eight, five to seven, genius. Got it. What? Say one. Orbitals in a subshell. Holy moly. One. One. What comes after the S? And remember, we're just dealing with valence electron. So even if I went to the D block, remember, it drops down in energy level. S and P are on the same energy level. So I go to P block, right? But how many orbitals are in a P block again? P subshells got how many? Six. I mean orbitals. Oh, orbitals. Three. Three. So here is the negative one P orientation. The zero P orientation. And here's the one P orientation. Okay. I'm cool with that. That makes it easier to understand. So whenever you looked at it, if we had 2s, 
to P. Break it down. If I have P, what's the angular momentum quantum number? You're still writing it down, aren't you? I'll wait. I'm asking a question and I'm challenging you. I was too busy looking and trying to, trying to figure out what this means to write it down. You know what the really funny thing is? I've been socked twice now. You're a big punchable guy. <laughs> okay, I'm going to stand behind my desk the rest of the day. Everybody, yeah, come on, it do me a favor, make sure Kenzie's not the last one left in the room. <laughs> I feel like I'm gonna get my jaw jacked now. No, you've been socks. Like if someone socks you, it's funny. <laughs> it's funny, man. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's funny. funny. It's, not a laugh it's funny, but for some reason, I'm not laughing. Light up, man. I'm a punchable guy. Can't wait to stare that with Mary. All right, y'all got that down? If I'm dealing with P, okay, what is the angular momentum quantum number? <laughs> it's one. What's the angular momentum quantum number? L. If it's P, it means L is one. What's M sub L? Magnetic. <coughs> what number? Um, it's oh, it's negative one to one. Yeah. Negative one, zero, one. Hey, Dale, will you do me a favor? Mm -hmm. Will you go to the back door and open my uh, door for my wife and daughter? I would, but I'm scared Kenzie's going to punch me. <laughs> yeah. Will that will the fire alarm go off if I No, that's not going to go off. I do it all the time. That's how I actually I exit the class. I mean, I feel like you're safe. I don't feel like I can hit someone very hard. I don't know. You do play volleyball, so you hit the ball hard. <laughs> I'm, not, I don't, I'm not a hitter. <laughs> you, you hit that hard. Hardly? Okay. Hardly. See? Are you not going to let her in? No. No. Why is she not ready? She's getting my hug. Well, hold the door so she knows she can come in. It's cold. Hey, mister, I ain't wearing a beard net and the health department failed McDonald's again. Hold the door open. I'm propping it up and it's getting cold in here, Mr. Ollie. That's fine. I ain't the one paying the gas bill. Wait a second. Actually, I did. It don't matter. They're going to spend my money anyway. Go ahead. I'm going to start pulling these levers, Mr. Roll. I hope you don't mind. Yeah, go ahead, man. Go for it. What about that? Is that, is that the gas shut off? Yeah. <laughs> Everybody's going to be cold. Nobody will have a reason. I would have came and done it, but Kenzie threatened to punch me. <laughs> I didn't threaten to punch you. Don't put words side. in my mouth. <laughs> I got socked again. I've been socked twice now. It's what? Like, you've been socked twice? Oh, yeah. It's melting. Very careful, Miss Hall. You're about to deck the hawks. Does my wife look <laughs> punchable too, Kenzie? I'm just no. Curious. No, she's my a daughter very lovely punchable. woman. Two lovely Please ladies. Yeah. Okay, so this is where this negative one to zero and the one comes from. This is orientation. What is this? How does the electrons go in? Now I'm going to use numbers to symbolize what electron it is. Okay? First electron goes here, second electron's there. That's right, you need to learn this. The third one goes here in the negative one orientation. Hi, I'm Brittany Harris. Oh, that's cute. work into the office, please. I get her hair with the X. That's cute. Thanks. So, where does the fourth electron go? Zero. Zero orientation. Why? Hun's rule. Where's the fifth? One. one. Six. Three. Seven. Eight. Hey, I did it. Oh, wow. Seven. This is crazy. Eight. I told you in this class everything connects back together. And that's how it does. Oh, I see now what you did. <sighs> Tell me, it all connects. I forgot the L and the ML. I totally forgot how to do that. I, 
Why did you still put her yogurt on your face? You understand how this goes. What am I giving you this for? This right here tells you where the electrons go. So let's say, for example, I asked you to give me an electron dot diagram for carbon. We write the chemical symbol down. There's C for carbon. Now, from here, how many valence electrons does carbon have? Four has four valence electrons. Your mom is looking at you like she wants you. Ah, Daddy loves you. Say bye, everybody. Say bye bye. She's like, what? Like, who is all these big people? She thought about it. That counts for something. All right, so carbon has four valence electrons, so I have to show four electrons here. So guess what I do? One, dot there. Two, dot there. Three, dot there. Four, dot there. That's important. That's it. I'm done. Where's the trick, Mr. Hall? I'll tell you where the trick is. The tricks are in ones like carbon. at four valence electrons. Even though I'm stressing to you right now, that's the order the electrons go in. Somebody on the quiz on Friday is going to take this electron and put it here. No. No. Um. Happens every year. Let's say I give you sulfur. How many valence electrons does sulfur have? Six. Has six. It's in the sixteenth column. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Six electrons. Ah, ah, ah. <coughs> Understand? You want to practice one? Absolutely. Good, because I'm only going to give you two. Okay. You need more than two. You should be down in the. Like, down learning what my daughter's learning right now. Lee Bob. Why? Why is it in that order? Of that? Is it just because that's how they did it? I mean, he just explained it. Then. No, but like, why does it matter where we draw the dots around the cir around the, the, the thing? That's why. Is so is that? I guess they like. Why didn't they just do it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You know. <laughs> I guess just. Central. Negative one, zero, one. P orientation. Why didn't they just move it around? <laughs> because that wouldn't have followed science. Oh, okay. That makes sense. I told you everything oh, connects in this okay. class. What you done with electron configurations, what you did with the quantum numbers, you can't leave that. I get it now. So the, the top the top is the S. Let's see if I the, can oh, yes. maybe it's, maybe he wrote it on the board and I'm dumb. <laughs> I get it now. The top is the S subshell. The right is the negative one subshell. <laughs> I literally kind of looks like there's a bit of uh, English oh, teacher and history now. teacher. <laughs> Kind of got a like an Indiana Jones fan vibe going. How? I think it's the purse on the side. What's that called again? Jacket. What happens if it's, it's a compliment? You look really cute. Thanks so much. I mean, you could look like a science teacher. I mean, we don't know. Look at that. Really <laughs> what about the F block? I got clothes on. Oh, we are special. We're not talking about that F block. All right. It's dead to us. <coughs> Do practice one. Partial, partial I give you hard ones, okay? Okay. Prepare yourself. I'm prepared. Give you argon, atomic number 18. Mr. Alt, that's dumb and easy. Mm -hmm. And I'm done. And I give you the calcium. Okay. Atomic number 20. 20. Hey. I love you, beautiful. I love you. I got, hey, I got socked twice. Yes, I'm
Nice. I'm done. Hey, I need that as my car, by the way. Hand it to me. Yep. I think so I can talk somebody. Yeah, there's no PE rotation. Or TPS. Makes sense. Well, I have to use one of the socks. Are we doing it? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's good. Dots are some funky. You're about to see a master one of your What if I just tell him my handwriting's really bad and then... Um, I have this intuition that yeah. Mr. Hall's going to make us memorize the periodic table. I know. And we're not going to get a periodic table to do this part of the test. <laughs> oh, no. No, he wouldn't do that. That's the trick. <laughs> you can't get us with anything else. We have to memorize absolutely everything. I have like one All right, let's see what you got here. <laughs> Argon? Yep. Yep. Some of y'all are lighting up like Christmas trees. You're like, holy smokes, if this is on the quiz, I will at least get to you. I feel like a super genius. I'm so smart. Really this is like the easiest to work. I'm so we're not, not going to get a periodic table for this part of the test, are we? No, you will. We will? The only two, there's only two quizzes I will not give you a periodic table. The first one is your element quiz. The reason I won't give you that is it's literally the right. yeah, information when I'm asking for. Just match them. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I think maybe next week. Unless y'all want to wait until we get back. What are we doing next week? Take quiz. Take a quiz this Friday that's like a cocktail. But then if you want to, we can wait. You want to wait? We want to take the element quiz next week. What is the what's on the element quiz? Literally, I give you 25, I give you 50 elements you have to memorize. 25 of them I give you the chemical symbol and I ask you for the name. The other 25, I give you the name, I ask you for the chemical symbol. Oh, okay, that's fine. And that's it. And I mean, you, you don't got to worry about it. I mean, if you try spelling phosphorus and you put phosphorus, then phosphorus. I'm going to count it. Um, I'm not going to worry about it. Are you guys crazy. teaching after break or before break? Mm. Really now, the content went on Friday. That's not going to go. So we flip the coin. When is break? After the next week. Next Thursday is the last day. We're going to take it Thursday next Next Thursday. You ain't gonna be here on Thursday. Yeah, Who are you like? That was like right. a three hour release. That's yeah. so true. It was like a total of two hours a day. I don't know. Next Wednesday. Right. Yeah, we won't. I don't know. Next Wednesday's kind of. Can you, when, when can you give us the elements? Can you give them like today or tomorrow? I'm gonna be tomorrow. Now, let's do it. Let's do it now, Mr. Let's do it next period. <laughs> we got this. You'd actually be surprised. I think you actually could pass it. I don't I think, think you would get an A, but I think you passed. Yeah, I think I could. I think I know enough. I think I could. Now, questions. I know enough of them. Anybody got questions? Um. This is literally it. It don't get any harder. This is why it's going to be confusing to you. Is I don't hit it again. I just give you a practice sheet of electron dot diagrams and Lewis structures. I feel pretty good about it. What, what, what's so funky about the D and F block? What, 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 what's going on there? They do weird things. <laughs> is, that as, is that as in-depth as you're going to go? We don't right talk now? about D block. <laughs> we do. I'll get to them later, okay? Well, what's your favorite block? My favorite block? Yeah. You've asked that at least five times, and I, I swear. I swear you have. I think I forgot. Mr. Walsh. Yeah, I think oh. I forgot the fact that I I like the square one because it's even on all sides. Yeah, I do. I like the D block. Yeah. It's also cool. Wait a minute. The square uh, wait one. A minute. <laughs> wait a minute. There's more than one square. Okay. No. I like the D yeah, block. That was pretty goofy. Um. I don't know. I guess. I guess the P block. Oh my God! Every rectangle is a square, but not every curve is a rectangle. <laughs> <laughs> I think you got that backwards. Say all that again. squares are rectangles, but not all rectangles are squares. Correct. So dumb. I think I squares should have their own class. Yeah, squares should not be a rectangle. I, 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 because rectangles are literally just two sides. 
sides are shorter than the other two sides. Hey, do you know what's weird about this? Math people. They're arguing about squares and rectangles. You know what science people are doing? Putting cats in boxes. Mm. Exactly. Mm. You know what they're doing? They're making... All right. What was the question I missed because I didn't... Now! There was one, wasn't there? Yeah. Anybody know what time this class is? No. Oh, oh my God, it's 10 o'clock. Like All right, we're going to move into covalent ball. My now. favorite. I'll be honest, I feel like this class would be so much better if this is like the normal time. I feel like that. So true. It would. It would That's actually so true. 11.07. Oh, we're good. We got time, man. I went to bed at like 1.30 last night, and I feel so awake and alive. My heart is about to explode. All right, so we're going to talk about covalent bonds. So whenever we get into covalent bonds, the first thing you need to know about covalent bonds are that they form between... A non-metal and non-metal. In other words, both of these come from the right of the staircase. So we're forming between a non-metal and a non-metal. Other thing you need to know is they share electrons. Here's kind of the way of looking at this, okay? Now I'm going to show you, I'm going to try and take something that you know to bridge a gap to something I want you to know. So, we exhale what? Carbon dioxide. <coughs> carbon dioxide. That's one so that's... And two oxygen. Is what is what right? So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to do the orbital notations for oxygen and... Uh, for oxygen, carbon, and oxygen. So 1s, 2s, 2p, 1s, 2s, 2p, 1s, 2s, 2p. Now whenever you look at this, the 1s and the 2s are full for all of them. The difference comes in here. So like with carbon, if you look at carbon, how far in does carbon go in the second row? Um, two places, Mr. Hawk. Well, thank you so much. So that means we have two valence electrons. So one, two. Now here comes the weird thing. Look at oxygen. How far in is oxygen? Four places. So it has four electrons. One, two, three, four. I don't understand why that was funny, but it'll be. It like so here's the thing that gets really freaky and really weird. Carbon, we're carbon. What do each of them need? They need, um, oxygen needs, looks like two, and carbon needs four. So wow. oxygen is needed two, carbon is needed four. They get around one another, here's what they do. They share. Aww. Aww. <laughs> so what will happen? What will happen here is it's like these two will overlap, these two will overlap, but then it's like oxygen wants in on the action here. So this bottom oxygen will then have these two overlap and then have these two overlap. So now what happens for them, or these electrons that are getting shared with them, counts for them. So it's like they have a full octet. Get stability. Here's the problem. There's not always equal sharing. It's 
kind of like think back when you were in kindergarten and your best friends asked you to bring your wrestlers and your wrestling ring from home to play with during playtime. You bought it and then you brought stuff to play with, they brought stuff to play with, but now they ain't willing to share with you. They're not even willing to share your own toys with you. So they just hang on to them the whole time. That's a stinking jerk, first of all. They deserve to have their head broke off the wrestler. Yeah, those are, those are some kids who need to be socked. <laughs> Welcome. Stop at the wrestler. Yeah. Punch everybody. <laughs> no, it's just. Not that Kenzie needs to sit down, sir. The adults, the children. Yeah. Who is not safe? You just go in and cancel and say, it's not fair. All the adults are socking everybody. If a kid wants to sock somebody, we're getting suspended. I'm just saying. Line them up. I'll hold you discipline. <laughs> oh my gosh. So, this is what happens there's the sharing of the electrons. Oh. But there's not an equal sharing of electrons. Like tomorrow. This is so sad. I have a very special friend to show you. I have a little demonstration for you. It's a best, very special guest. Okay. Ask away, Dale. Um, okay. Oxygen, carbon, oxygen, right? That's the, that's the three. Okay, so the carbon, does it not want a full octet? It does want a full octet. Okay, so it doesn't get a full octet by sharing those two, does it? It does. Oh, it does. Never mind. There's four. Okay. Because they still count four. Some question. Never mind. It's okay. This is new to you. Okay? This is, this is what happens here. It's a beautiful thing. It's, it's like they're sharing. It's like in marriage. Okay? Let's all be honest. We've seen bad marriages. We've seen good marriages. We've seen the bad marriage to where it's like one person does nothing, the other person's doing everything. And it's just expected. Marriage is awful. And you got other marriages that are good, that it's equal. Take and flow. One doesn't look and say that it's my job to mow the grass, but it's your job to mop the floors. Doesn't matter. Yeah, I'm giving you some free relationship advice today. Yeah, seriously. Like, I get it, like, because I am a man, so I feel like I take care of the grass. But at the end of the day, if I'm, like, super busy at the church or something and I can't get to mow the grass, Mary can go out and mow the grass. Now, if she does that, I'm still going to come home mad, even though I shouldn't. Because Mary's like, I'm not too good to mow the grass. And that's like, you know, this morning after breakfast, Mary takes a shower. I unload the dishwasher. I load the dishwasher. I'm not too good for that. I've mopped the floors. I do not do the laundry because I'll be honest with you. I'm the typical man. It's all in the hamper. It's all dirty. It all goes in the machine. <laughs> Mary goes, what are you doing? You're putting colors with whites. I'm like, because that's I, I, fine. It works out all the time. And then she comes over and sorts it all out. And I'm like, you put my socks with the white. Yeah, but that's that's like how it goes. But they're not white. I have never. They I did, think it's a myth. I don't that think happened it's to really. my volleyball jersey. Beautiful black jersey. But the, like, the, the neck was white. It was, it was turned pink because they were washed with red shorts. Mm. I think it's a myth. I've never seen that happen, and I have done laundry for 13 not, years. Not all okay. the bonds result in a full octet. What are they? I'm in a room full of monsters. Step right through your laundry guys. Why? Because. But they're walking shirt. towards it. Washed 800 times with a red. It's red. not very white anymore, buddy. Uh, it's kind of like grandma's body. But it's still, it would be like dyed red if I washed it. It were dyed pink. So, you have equal share, you have unequal share, okay? This is where we're really going to take off tomorrow. I know I'm ending early, but I don't want to jump into this and confuse you. That's not 11.07. No, I'm ending early. <laughs>